Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to ask a fundamental question. Will NVIDIA purchasing ARM hurt Linux? Coming up. So welcome back to the show. Today we want to just have a look at this deal between NVIDIA and ARM and SoftBank and see is this going to impact the Linux community. So let's go ahead and go back. ARM right now is based uh, out of UK and they were purchased by SoftBank which is that ginormous tech innovations company that pretty much if you're asked the basic trivia question who owns blah 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 tech company that you've probably never heard of just say SoftBank it's likely that they're the ones that own it. Well they purchased a lot of different companies but like a lot of companies in 2020 several investments kind of went down a little bit and it turns out that ARM was one of the technologies that they looked at divesting themselves of and so NVIDIA came up the graphics card company they came up and offered $40 billion to purchase it. Now, I think it's $25 billion in stock, $12 billion in cash, and the rest of it is disbursements paid throughout ARM employees. So, the in the deal, the company is still based out of UK, despite SoftBank is not, and SoftBank purchased ARM with a promise to keep it there for at least like a year or 18 months. NVIDIA is honoring this. So NVIDIA said they are going to keep the licensing processes the same. They are going to keep the company in UK right now. Whatever SoftBank agreed to, they have agreed to, at least on the short term. Now, we find a problem with that is do we not have precedent here in the United States? And this is one of the big questions is do we want to take ARM, a UK-based business, owned now by, I think SoftBank might be Chinese. I don't quote me on that one exactly. But a lot of the international trade deal gets concerned when the United States gets involved, which is kind of getting frightening. And now the question is, do we want United States controlling this? Because look at the charter deal. We talked about this on the weekly news roundup at one point in time. They're like, hey, we won't, we won't throttle anything. We won't charge anything extra, all these types of things. And then they came out and asked for and were granted permission that all of the requirements that they agreed to when they purchased the company all just became null and void uh, about a week or two ago. And so they can pretty much do what they want. Well, will NVIDIA do the same thing? There is a fundamental question. Whatever they made the promise to isn't necessarily going to be binding because we in America have set things up so that there's really no accountability among the companies in order to do the right thing morally or ethically for that matter. And so this is a question that we have to ask. Now, if you're unfamiliar with ARM and what does this have to do with Linux or anything else, ARM is the one of the larger architectures for processors. So when you take a standard computer, you go to the store, you buy a computer, you bring it home, more likely than not, it is an Intel-based. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's made by Intel, uh, but it's an, it's a, it would be called an X64 base, or, or maybe you have an i386 base. You, know, you hear about these bases, particularly when you're downloading Linux distributions, which kind do you get? And so do you get the 32-bit or the 64-bit? Those both refer to... Intel architectures. Well, ARM is a separate architecture. And the ARM architecture is what is found in Raspberry Pis, it's found in mobile phones, it's found in tablets. The old controversial Windows RT when the Surface Pros first came out, they had the Windows Surface Pro, which were Intel-based computers, and the Windows uh, Surface RTs, which were ARM-based processors. Of course, if you follow the news, Macintosh is moving to ARM processors. Why? ARM processors are more power efficient. So if you can get a computer system running with the same basic, um, the same basic power through ARM, you will save a lot of power. And saving power is actually a good thing. It's something I'm doing in my office now where I'm measuring the, the power out of the wall that my current NAS takes. I'm going to be comparing this to what does a Raspberry Pi pull out. Well, my current NAS is based on an Intel processor. The Raspberry Pi is based on ARM. My early projections, it's going to be a, maybe about a tenth to a, a half to a tenth of the power. Um, I have not finished the Raspberry Pi analysis yet. I just have the power analysis for the NAS. We'll have more details on that later. 
But what happens now is that several different groups are powered by ARM. Not only do you have Apple, um, Samsung has big deals, Huawei has big deals, all the cell phone manufacturers generally use ARM processors, Raspberry Pis as we have said, and numerous other things out there. And so with NVIDIA purchasing ARM, is this going to have any change like what happened in Charter? So how does ARM work? Well, they use a licensing model. They're not licensing software, they're licensing the hardware. So somebody can come in and they have what is called open licensing. So somebody can say, I want to build a new chip with this type of customization. They go to ARM, they get work out the license deal, they pay for the number of chips that they have, and then they will be able to implement those chips into the system. So they are licensing the hardware. The problem that we start to have here is that there are several products that NVIDIA makes that are direct competitors with ARM processors. One example is Raspberry Pi, a single board computer. There is an Intel version, or excuse me, an NVIDIA version, excuse me, that NVIDIA creates another single board computer like the Raspberry Pi. And this is a direct competition. There's other types of things NVIDIA gets involved in that we start to see some of the questions, will NVIDIA close these gaps or will they not? Not to mention, NVIDIA could eventually change the architecture of how the drivers work and how all these types of functions work. And Intel is definitely not FOSS friendly. That's one of the key take-homes. Somebody wants to run Linux, I tell them, don't use NVIDIA. Go ahead and do the AMD for your graphics. It's going to cause less headaches down the road. Now, is it getting good? Yes. Are they working with Linux more? Yes, but not necessarily in a free and open source environment. They're not particularly, they don't have a history, we should say, of being friendly to free and open source. And so Raspberry Pis and other things that we find in the FOSS field, even though Raspberry Pis do have some proprietary things in there, but still it is something that is generally embraced by the FOSS community. And we're seeing some areas like this where in, uh, NVIDIA could come in and completely screw that up. Now, could this negatively impact the role with Apple that they have? Could they jack up licensing fees for people that they don't want to work with? Uh, for example, bringing up the Raspberry Pi again, the Raspberry Pis all use a Broadcom chip. Broadcom and NVIDIA do not generally get along super well, so it remains to be seen. Is the Raspberry Pi going to continue with Broadcom chips? Are they going to have to go with something else? Or are they just going to go defunct? Well, these are all raising good questions that says, I don't know, man, I don't know. But there is a silver lining to this. We have to get out of this mindset. It's just like when you switch to Linux. You have to get out of the mindset of, can I run Microsoft Word to, I need to write a document on a word processor. Is there a way to do that? Now, and the fact of the matter is there are like half a dozen or a dozen really good Linux-based word processors. Most of them are going to work with Word just fine. You know, I have to do a little bit of setup, install Windows fonts, save as a docx file by default out of LibreOffice if you know you're going to be sending documents back and forth with Word users. Don't be asking, can I get X software to work? Say, can I accomplish my task with this software? And so this is what we're going to see. What if NVIDIA comes in, worst case scenario, they just start dropping nukes on the ARM processors. Now, some people are saying they probably won't do that because if you spend $40 billion on a company, you do not alienate your massive user base. Why is ARM growing so fast? Because there is a massive user base. They're not going to come in and completely destroy it but they might tweak some things here and there. So what if they tweak things here and there and make it a lot harder to work with ARM computers? Well, there is good news. There are actually two free and open source alternatives to the ARM processor architecture. One of these is by IBM. We can question or not whether we trust IBM. Many sources, I lean towards probably not. That's a little goofy but there are definitely some people who could say, yeah, we can trust IBM. 
particularly if we're not using a proprietary source. So they have what is called the Power Architecture, very similar to ARM, and they have recently open sourced it. So it started proprietary, it is now open source. Another one though that is coming up and is gaining some popularity is called RISC-V. That's R-I-S-C-V. And I need to check if this is related to the RISC OS. I've chatted with them recently. Uh, they have a Raspberry Pi build. I want to see if they're in the same group. I'm going to ask them those questions and maybe I'll get back to you guys. These guys are ground up a fully free and open source ARM alternative. So there are absolutely some things coming up that if ARM becomes Linux kind of incompatible or Linux, it's a royal pain in the petunias, then there are going to be alternatives. We're going to start to see architectures for being power and risk V. So ultimately, it's not really going to change a whole lot. Definitely not in the short term. Long term, it may very well cause a better situation in more, uh, basically more alternatives out there. Some people are like, yeah, okay, I just don't trust NVIDIA. Let's go and work with the RISC-V instead. And we're going to start seeing more, uh, more distros come up with alternative architectures as well. And that's actually a good thing because then that gets us away from the whole Spectre and, and all of these other issues that we've been having with um, some of the current process that we, that we have. We have uh, increased power efficiency, which means decreased power, lower costs to use ultimately we're going to see a net benefit down the road. Why is this? Well, because it's not all about is ARM the only technology, it's that nature finds a way, but so do computer geeks. Let me know your thoughts about this sale in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.